Welcome back everybody. This is part two of the Dickinson Commando Shotgun Review. This one here has the uh, sort of saltwater nickel based finish on there. They make it in a few different configurations, but for those that didn't see it, uh, we have a part one, hence the name part two. And uh, in part one, we had some problems with the gun. Didn't like that one either. Uh, the gun went back to the folks at Dickinson and uh, we got it back in. So just one note on that, uh, when it arrived at their facility, they actually called me and said, did you do a torture test of it? And I was like, no, what you saw in the video is, is what I did because I sent them the video with the um, service request. And uh, it's just funny because out here, um, what you kind of don't see with all the tobacco up right now is that it's very sandy and silty. So sand and silt just gets in every gun that we have out here. And they're like, it's full of sand. <laughs> like Every gun's full of sand. They don't all uh, choke like this shotgun did. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do here is just run some rounds through it. We have a few targets set up. And uh, right now it's loaded with this stuff here, some federal target load. It's a uh, seven and a half shot. I think I have another round to top it off. Um, but the big thing about this gun, guys, is that uh, at Sportsman's Guide right now, it's like 122 bucks, I think, with my code. So value proposition-wise, right, I want this gun to work. I hope it works. I hope it was just a fluke and a one-off because I've seen other reviews of this gun where people said it was working really well, like the late Boy Scout, uh, for example. So that's why I wanted it to get in and see if there's like a real budget option out there for folks. And uh, obviously it didn't do so well the first time, but we're going to see how it does here. Uh, the second time. These are the first rounds since it's been back you guys are watching. I've checked the footage on that. I'm not sure if it's fed. I should note it's also totally possible that I short shucked it. Uh, one thing that is sort of weird about the gun is this uh, forend here, how it covers the receiver like that. I don't know why a lot of foreign guns have that. I'm not a fan, um, simply because shell carriers and stuff like that that you would typically use. Uh, it's harder to get them on there just in general, and there's really no purpose to it. I guess you could grab it back here, but really ergonomically you want to be up here anyway. So we'll load it up here with some buckshot. This is uh, double up buck, Remington stuff. See how it likes this, because obviously it did fine with that Federal, which is good. See how it likes the buckshot. That's got a little bit of spice to it. So, so far so good. We're just gonna run some ammo through it right now. Kind of probably roll on some music or something YouTube-y like that and uh, come back here. I brought a bunch of ammo to shoot, so we're gonna shoot it. Not sure how many shots I actually rolled in there for you guys, but we just put 120 rounds through it without a single issue. Combination of buckshot and birdshot, federal loads, low brass, Remington, the stuff that a lot of you guys said may have been one of the problems uh, in the first video. We put 80 rounds of that, or 75, excuse me, rounds of that through it and had no issues. So uh, we're moving in the right direction for sure. One thing I want to update before getting into the features is that that round that I didn't know if I short shucked it or not, I didn't. Hopefully that's coming into focus for you guys, but we just had a light primer strike on it, so it did not go off. All right, so with that aside, it's running pretty well. Uh, that could have been the ammo's problem, who knows, especially with low brass. Uh, we'll get into the features of the shotgun. We have a very good recoil pad here on the rear. It's kind of ventilated, so that way it can absorb the shock coming at you because uh, with this gun you need it it's a very very lightweight gun i'll roll in the exact weight here for you guys to see but you need that recoil absorption rather if you're out uh, running around with buckshot and stuff like that 
We do have a sling swivel here on the stock. Good checkering there on the hands. The fit, in terms of how the stock fits with the receiver, I guess some folks would probably have a problem with it. It's a little bit swollen here on the side. It's nothing you would ever notice in real life when you're firing it. But it's just something to point out. Might be one of the things that they're sort of skimping on to get the price point um, that this one here comes in at. So like we talked about earlier, uh, nickel base finish. So if you're in humid environments like I am here in the Carolinas, it's definitely a good option there. It's not going to rust up on you. Uh, so that is good. It's sort of, sort of loosely an 870 clone, um, but your 870 parts don't plan on them interchanging. So just kind of think of it that way, but our safety, cross bolt safety, um, trigger, trigger's excellent, like most shotguns actually. I mean, it's just single action, really crisp break. And uh, there's not a lot of shotguns that have bad triggers out there. This right here, this little lever is how you're gonna run your action. So you're just gonna grab that, run your action. If you're not actually firing the gun, if you need to clear it, whatever the case may be. Uh, you guys can see the bolt carrier group. It looks like our extractor is billet because we do have those machining lines in there. So not MIM. Again, good for a budget gun. Disassembly is pretty much 870-ish in that regard. Uh, I have a video on how to do it if you guys are interested. Uh, we have our magazine cap here up front. This thing is so hot because I just fired all those rounds through it. Even the magazine cap's hot, but just twist that off. Barrel will come out, all those sorts of things. We have a sling swivel there up front. Like we talked about here, this fore end is something I don't like. I simply don't think there's any reason for it to overlap the receiver. You guys can probably see we're starting to get some marks on there already. Um, but again, it's functioned pretty well so far. The sight uh, is not a bead sight like probably most American shooters would be used to. It's kind of a ramped up sight, but it works really well. Um, target on the left today is out there at 15 yards. Target on the right is at 12 yards zero issue engaging with it uh, so in that regard we're good the action is smooth the action's been smooth that's not been a problem at all um, i did lubricate the gun we got it in um, and no issues at all there um, the forend one thing i would also like if they were coming out with like a gen 2 is to have a little bit of texture on there while they do have it on the bottom it's a little bit slick uh, they offer other forends though uh, dickinson does and uh, maybe just throw one of those on there because they, like I said, they have several different models of these 12 gauge guns. But um, again, we'll shoot it some more and then let you know here in a minute how it went. the magic of video editing you guys didn't have to sit there and take the shoulder pounding of putting another 150 rounds through it um, but we did put those through it and zero issues um, so we had one light primer strike today but if you guys watched the first video you'd know uh, this is a dramatic improvement uh, over what we first saw if the gun came like this from the factory I would be highly recommending it um, at this price point, like you said, with my code at Sportsman's Guide right now. And Sportsman's Guide did send this for those uh, wondering. Dickinson did not send this. Sportsman's Guide did for the review. Um, at this price point, if it works like this, I absolutely recommend it. Um, I see no reason not to. And again, I may have just got a lemon because every other report I've seen on the internet was positive. So take that for what it's worth. Grain of salt there. You guys can see we're starting to get some wear marks there. But that's just normal use, um, at least normal around here. Perhaps not to Dickinson who think it went through a torture test. But yeah, uh, when I got it back, it didn't say what work they actually did to get it to function, um, but it's functioning fine, as you guys saw. Again, that one light primer strike, don't know if it was the ammo or the gun. Either way, with buckshot, which we put 50 rounds through today, uh, zero issues. So that's really what's important, in my opinion, because a lot of folks are probably looking at this thinking like, a, you know, get a budget shotgun for home defense kind of thing. If that's the case, I mean, price point wise you can't beat it you know the next one that has some credibility to it sort of step up in the chain is probably the Mossberg 88 the Maverick 88 it's a good gun um, but you're looking at about a dollar price increase which uh, compared to $120 for a lot of folks that's significant right um, so it's something to think about but I like affordable options for self-defense it's something uh, I always want to take a look at them because I've, I've been that guy um, I know what it's like to not have a lot of money 
and need a gun uh, to defend yourself. So I've been in that situation before and having options is the more options, uh, the merrier, I guess is probably what it meant to say, but yeah. So all is good in part two, that's the good news. Um, again, every other report I've seen on these says they're good. So that's it guys, there'll be a link down below if you guys are looking to pick it up. Thanks to Sportsman's Guide uh, for sending it out for the test and the review, but we're gonna wrap it up there. That's uh, gonna end the video right now. I'd say it's good to go. I feel confident with it for sure. If you guys have any questions, you can always post those down below in the comment section. As always, you can also post them, or rather shoot me a message over at my Facebook page. That's the best place to get me if you actually need answers to your question. I do respond to all the messages I get over there. Sometimes it takes me a few days, but work with me. I just don't see them a lot of times when you guys comment on YouTube and stuff, do their new, uh, the way they display stuff for creators. So it is what it is. If you guys aren't seeing two to four videos-ish a week here on the channel, make sure you're subscribed and you've hit the notification bell. If you've done that and you're still not seeing them, I highly recommend you sign up for my email list. I send out max one email a week with just all the videos of the week. So that way there's no gigantic uh, social media giant corporation in between us and i can go bfr direct to you guys and uh you guys will see that i also include some deals of the week to help you guys save money hopefully and uh, that's it not super spammy or anything like that if you want to sign up you can do so at the sign up tab on my facebook page or if you don't want to go to facebook because you hate mark zuckerberg that's cool with me you can just go to mr guns and gear under the sign up tab.com mr guns and gear .com under the sign up tab rather and uh, do so there as well that's it guys that is my spiel thanks for watching thanks for subscribing Look forward to seeing you in the next video.